Well, we got through another day. Cowboys win. We had a lot of good scores in this one. I hope you avoided most of the bad ones. But we'll kick it off with this Cowboys-Titans one. And for those that are in looping world, there's a few guys to loop at the moment, especially in these outside backs. I've seen a few guys post there with Teddy in their team and have Warbrick on the emergencies. They have guys like Trindle, who are now pronounced out for this game, which you can use to loop as well. So seeing a few guys reverse trades as well. There's one really good one that we're going to do Trindle to... Uh, was it Trindle? Trindle to, to Robson and then reversed that one and took Warbrick's points and that obviously worked out really good with Robson not scoring as well as he did last week especially but yeah a lot of those guys with, with Teddy in there with Isaiah Katoa for example and then they've looped both of them guys to get Warbrick and Pereira so that's worked out great uh, but he came out with a nice 64 so a big effort from him five line breaks in this one so it shows how good the Cowboys defense is not I think Cowboys are very lucky to get away with this one the Titans boys going down injured. Obviously, Brimson. Yes, they can bring in Jaden Campbell, who... How good was that 40-20 save, you know, to then get it back and then avoid a couple of defenders? He's obviously super talented. But this does give him a chance at the fullback position, and he'll be an interesting one going forward based on his price and where he's at being, you know, off the bench for the last, you know, the first four weeks of the, of the round, so... Of the season. Yeah, Cowboys, not very good. So, lots to work on. Brimson went down. Then, yeah, they lost a couple of boys, four in as well. Uh, so, yeah, once that happened, I was like, Titans were up at the time. I was like, oh, Cowboys should win from here. But, yeah, still not good signs for them. They were playing great, and Titans were pretty solid in that first sort of 20. And, you know, a few changes obviously messes that up a bit. But, yeah, Camperera, a good score for him. And he's going to make some cash now. He's up to 32 average. You know, he's, fi he's finally going to get up there. He's up four, 4K so far, and he'll be up around that 260 mark at least after his you know good effort last week into this one as well so sometimes it shows to to pay the pay the faith with these types of cheap guys because they're not going to hurt you too much other than being like a, a red dot on there you know he's ended up being a much better player for your team and for your money making than someone like tommy to but it did take a couple of big scores after some low ones that's for sure Dan Fafita, a few people looking at trading him out with his buy coming up next week and i think that that was you know he's someone that can definitely continue to score like this and yes you you've bought him at about that sort of 57 average there and that's what he scored so far so there are other guys you know Cam Murray for one who we'll speak about in a sec that are performing under what they're priced at which is not exactly ideal you know guys like Robson guys like Grant they scored under their break it, uh, under their where they're priced at this week and for feed has been pretty solid overall last week wasn't as good for him but this is the type of thing you can do. That pass from right to left there was hectic to get to, to Cam Pereira. So I think that's going to be very helpful for his scores going forward, Cam Pereira, is that he can have Fafita on that, you know, on his inside, who's a massive presence and you know, can, can even pass the ball like that, a rocket pass to get him away and down the sideline. Awesome work. 21 tackles. We'd like that to be up a little bit, especially in an 80-minute effort, which is good that we did see him get 80 this week after getting the 67 in the previous. So Fafita, great work from him. And I think he's a hold into next week. But I can understand why someone would look to move him on. But, you know, you get through next week, most likely you, at max you have him and you have Tanner Boyd. If you have only one of them, I think it's easy to hold them through this week. We'll speak about Tanner in a second. Mo Fortawaka had one of his best games of the season, 61 minutes and 62 points. I still think he's an avoid for now, but we'll get there with him later down the track, potentially, if he's not making origin and you know, he's a, a bit cheaper than he is now. Priced around that 40 or something like that, which he pretty much is already, then he can uh, continue to, then he can be an option in your side over the origin period for sure. Let's move down the line. We've got guys like Philip Sami, who again, not an option at this point. That was his best game by far jeremiah nanay he had a try in this one and a line rank assist couple offloads ran for 109 meters and didn't get did get sin bin so for him it would have been a 65 to 70 point effort which is what we expect from him up and down up and down so for the lower percentage of, of people that own him 13.7 i haven't seen him in any of the any actually the top teams which you know it wouldn't wouldn't happen with an average in the mid 30s but yeah he's in a lot of teams so if you do own him Good score, continue to hold him, and hopefully he is not suspended for next week after that tackle. We'll see. Tommy did, and 52 for him was his best one of the year. Not an option at the moment. Tanner Boyd, 52. So these last two weeks have worked out great. Kieran Foran getting hooked in the first one. Kieran Foran getting injured in this one. That allowed him to kick for big meters. He really had very limited negatives. Just a negative five there, one error, one missed tackle, and the inside 10 meters there. So... Couple of goals, 23 tackles for one miss is great. Ran the ball a little bit. Yeah, got a couple of goals there. 
awesome work for Tanner. And I still think he can be held now. You know, I traded him a few weeks ago, got Robson, and thankfully, you know, yeah, Robson got to 74 last week, but Tanner's got the 42 and the 52 in these two weeks there, and he's a clear hold. If you only have the one Titan, I think he's good for that hooker and that half cover. Yes, if you want to use him as a trade asset, that's okay as well. But I think that you probably have a few other issues in your side that you can delve into rather than Tanner Boyd there. Tino, all right, big game for him as well in terms of minutes, but still not scoring super well. He's someone that is now priced at that 51 average, guys. So what you want to decide to do with him, this could be the week to, to move on from him because really he's just not producing exactly what you were looking for. Most people were hoping that he would be up towards that 60 average and a 48 over the first four weeks. And one of them included a big score with a try. It's very much a worry. And I can understand why you would move him. I would definitely move him before I would move Fafida because of Fafida's massive upside. And I think Tino's last five games was just a little bit of a flash in the pan because we know what he's been like as a scorer over the last few years. Yes, he hasn't been in the league for a long time, but we've seen it. Apart from those five games, what type of player he is, you know, even in these type of minutes before, he just really stepped up. He was offloading a lot. Yeah, even in this game, he offloaded three times, but the four missed tackles are there. You, know, you can't make 25 and miss four when you're priced at that 50 mark. So that's definitely a worry for him. Okay, Tommy Chester will go to next. You know, Townsend actually been scoring pretty well, but not an option at this point. Tommy Chester, very, very happy with his output. I was hoping for a 30, sort of a 35 to 40 from Tommy in this one. And just what I really loved and what really stood out to me in this Cowboy side was Tom Chester's desperation, one, to score that try, but just in every play. You know, when he's catching a bomb, it's all in. When he's going for that try, when he's running the ball, it's all in. And it's not something I see from a lot of these guys. As We've been kind of talking about Jeremiah and I a little bit there and the way he's running the footy. You know, even a lot of these middles, they're just kind of meandering up to, to the line, not really with a lot of force. Tamalolo is there here and there you know, in a bunch of games. Jordan McLean's kind of doing his thing there. Tamau was good in this game getting a try. But overall, the running back is something that we're, we're lacking a little bit. You look at those that game on Thursday night with the, the Eels and the Panthers there. You look at the Broncos and the Dolphins game and the clashes, the hits, the loud noises there on, on impact just aren't there in these Cowboys games. So something I think Tommy Chester brings, something I think Val Holmes brings on a regular, consistent basis, which is why he's so important to this side. But I think this is what needs to step up for the Cows and, and for... For Chester to still be able to score this well in a team where they're not getting a lot of go forward, yeah, you know, Robson's still able to get, get out of dummy half a lot, even in these types of games, is you know impressive for him to still be able to get that hundred meters when they're not really getting a lot of quick play of the balls, and you know they're not getting that wrestling that momentum through the middle. So we'll speak about Robbo in a second, but yeah, Tommy Chester with his line rake the try, six kick defusals, very similar to numbers to to what Hamiso Tabuai Fido is, is getting there. But 136 meters, couple offloads in there was great. Had a turnover tackle, just really a bit of everything and only the one penalty conceded in uh, in their try line. So very interesting there. What I will mention though is, that is when Camprera scored that try down that left-hand side, Chester hit him hard, but still didn't stop him from scoring. He didn't miss the tackle per se. It was obviously over the line, but they usually do give that a missed tackle. So I will take that. But uh, Chester did obviously go down five overnight as well. He was at 53. But a 48 for him really just increases his his price crazy. So what we're hoping for is, is if he can get another good score next week, we can get about 100K made from him. And then we could straight swap for someone at his price or that little bit cheaper, which would be cool. So very happy with his output in this week. Okay, Robson seems to be the up and down man. 74 last week, 70 in the first game, and then two 40s in between there, 42 and a 46. What I found really annoying watching this game really closely with Robbo was that the Titans guys loved to run sideways. So there wasn't a lot of work through the middle apart from guys like Tino. And then he was even trying to get a few offloads away. It was a few times that Robbo was tackling him and he got that offload away. But a lot of the guys, they'd run towards him kind of and then just skip away off to the left or the right. And that's why the tackles were so low for him at 36. He's obviously someone that playing 80 minutes in the middle there. Those tackle numbers are super low. And that was the reason why it wasn't that he wasn't getting into the contest or anything like that, because we know what he can do regularly, getting 50, 55 tackles, 60 there. Uh, it just wasn't his game. And then you know, because of a lot of those sideways runs, he was getting those missed tackles as well. And there was one he went in sort of like a shoulder charge or went in for a hit and bounced off there to get a, a missed tackle. So not ideal for Robbo. He only had the one tackle break, the one line break assist. Very happy with his 100 meters run. So if we can get that regularly with the 45, 50 tackles, 
you know, three missed tackles, two missed tackles there. And then, you know, any attacking stats from there, and he'll be back to, to being fine. I think it was a bit of an anomaly, but the way I took this one, I had Robson and Chester in this game. And, you know, I was hoping for a 35 to 40 from Chester, so take away those 10 points and add it to Robson. And if, you know, Robson got 56 and Chester got 38, I would have been very happy with that. So that's a good way to look at it, guys. For, for a lot of your players that are under-owned, so very low percentage ownership, like Robson or definitely Chester is, then that's a good way to look at it because you know, most people don't have them there. As I said with Holmes, just loving his work ethic, the 230 meters there, did get a line break and a try in this one, which was good, and the four goals, but you still are hoping for a little bit more from Holmesy considering he is down 13K and, and still picked up the same score as his average there. So yeah, you're definitely looking for more with a lot of these centers at the moment. Yeah, you look at Hamiso averaging 50 and he was a much cheaper price. So. Really, the main issue here is, is that the Cowboys aren't play, aren't performing that well. So, Holmes still clearly a hold because he is scoring you know, week to week fairly consistently. But you want to, you really want more from this team, that's for sure. Harlem Luki, a really good game for him to see kind of what he can do in those minutes and you know running the ball. He's someone that looked really involved as well coming back from his injury. I still think we need to watch him a little bit more. He's priced at yeah, and, and not a bad one there at four sixty four. He will kind of go down just a little bit more after this week. And if he can continue to get big minutes like that, then you'll you'll see him start to go up in price soon, especially when he can jag a try or something like that there. All right, the younger, Fa'asul Malawi, he ended up with 37. He got 48 minutes in this one. So very interesting how this played out. But obviously with the two injuries that changed things, Aaron Clark came on early. So that were probably Aaron Clark's minutes that he got. So... Make sure you look at that when you're, when you're thinking about picking him up next week. Jaden Campbell. So he's now down at 450K and he will go down again just with his really high break even. So if Brimson's out for an extended period of time, we'll find out a little bit more how his hamstring is. Then Campbell could be that guy to come in and, and do a great job for your side in that wing fullback, that tough wing fullback position. So he came on 58 minutes, got 33. And that just only involved the one line break there. Four tackle breaks and 155 meters. Pretty normal for him. He could probably get a little bit more than that going forward. So he definitely could be that sort of 40-point scorer. And he's going to be priced closer to 400 after this week. So I definitely think he's someone that you need to look at if Brimson's out for sort of anywhere between six to eight weeks because they do have a buy next week. We can wait on him and then make our decisions from there. For those that started with, uh, they're not bringing in Stimson early on or other round one or round two. He's had a pretty, you know, a couple of pretty poor for poor performances of recent time. So he's someone that you need to worry about as well. And I think he's definitely due a sell. This is the type of player he is. He can have some 40s there with big tackle numbers. And then he can go missing here. You know, obviously missing tackles, but then low run run numbers there. So that was that. Griffin Neem, I didn't think had a great game either. To play 49 minutes as a middle forward, a prop especially, and get 55 meters was disgusting for how he normally plays. So I'm expecting and hoping for a bounce back from him. What about the fall from grace from uh, Aaron Clark? People were excited for him at the start of the season and it just hasn't happened. So that's that there. And then you've got obviously Brimson with the 12. So Brimo is going to be a sell. Very unfortunate for those that own him, but it is what it is. Okay, let's move to the Bunnies v Manly there. And this was obviously a very low scoring tight contest, which we know that favors the middle forwards, the hookers, and also the halves with their kicking. So... That obviously worked out for a bunch of our players here. Uh, DCE was the biggest beneficiary. He obviously had had a uh, a nice long range try, a good pass from Murray at the end of that half, and and that almost killed them. So the bunnies didn't play that great. Manly were okay. That try, by the way, that disallowed try from Tommy. I'm so upset for for you guys and for the game because that was a clear backwards pass. Like it wasn't even close to being back, uh, forward out of the hand. And for the, for the ref to call that in the, in the position that he was, I think that was an absolute howler. So very sorry to Manly fans for that one. And Tommy Chaboyevic owners, that pass was great. It was back and it should have been a try. DCE there, 69. Obviously, yeah, the runaway try for him was good. Did have a try assist as well. And, you know, back to his best. Couple offloads, big kick meters. It's exactly what you're looking for with DCE. He is that 65, 63 point scorer on a regular basis. And... Thankfully, for those that traded Cleary to DCE, that worked out well with the 69 this week. Cleary, hopefully, will get updated very shortly. Very annoying that you know in this game last night there was no meters gained that were that were recorded, and in in both kick meters and in run meters for a lot of this game. So, very frustrating to follow along. 
but uh, yeah, thankfully it has been fixed up and yeah, at the end of the game there. And what we're looking for now is Thursday games to be updated. So yeah, big win for the Bunnies and some icing on the cake for my boy, Lockie Ilias. Very happy with that outing, outing here, but let's go to Cook first. 50 tackles in this one, did have a try assist, so a little bit of everything in this one. Probably could have ran for a little bit more, but still very happy with that 64. You'll be as an owner, he has lost a little bit, so he's only averaging 60, and you can see most of these guys that are priced really high have actually dropped down a little bit. So it shows why we go for those slightly cheaper guys. That's why guys like Carrigan, Tohu Harris have uh, worked out really well because it's very hard to emulate what you've done in previous years, unless you're one of the top tier superstars. Yeah, and Cook has been that, so for him to still hit 60 in these really tough outings, you know, sometimes he'll get an 80 or 90 against a lesser team. They just haven't come up against any uh, lesser opponents at the start here. Ola Kawatu, a much improved game for him base stat wise, so 47 there, he had the tackle breaks, he had the try in there as well. That was a cracking take off that kick, so well done to Ola. Murray, I'm worried about Murray, to be honest with you. A 58 average, he is going a little bit worse than what uh, Cook is. Obviously, they started at a slightly different price, about 45K difference there. But Murray's output to get 80 minutes and only 58, there was obviously a bunch of negatives in there. You've got negative 11, three penalties, obviously that pass for the error. But he's looked pretty gassed for at least the last 20 minutes of this game. He did have to play the whole 80 with the, the amount of forwards they had on their uh, on their, on their their pine there that they could play decent minutes or they trust to play decent minutes in this type of game. They'll be very pleased with the win. I'm not very pleased with starting with Murray over Carrigan when Carrigan is actually averaging more. So very upsetting on that front. What do you do with Murray? You hold him now. He's at 8.59, guys. He's priced you know, pretty close to that 60 number, which isn't the worst thing in the world. To be honest with you, going forward, obviously, yeah, you would have hoped for more. You still take the 58 and you run with it though. Hopefully for some better games here. No tackle breaks, no offloads in this one. Very upsetting, especially when we saw a couple of tackle breaks there. I, know I saw a few people complaining about that one. But unfortunately, it is what it is. Okay, let's talk about Ilias because I'm very excited about this one. We definitely needed a bounce back for owners of him. So 25 or 34, the last two. And yeah, in this one showed the, the class that he have. And the biggest and most important thing for Ilias in this one is that he builds that confidence. His first field goal, he absolutely nailed it as well and got a win for his team. He'll be very happy with that. And the confidence that comes from that is great. He had a lovely force dropout in there, which was a big, I think it was 40, 45 meter kick there, sat up just in the in the end goal and a great chase from his boys. So he would have got, as I said, plenty of, plenty of uh, energy and yeah, confidence out of that one. 26 tackles again for two misses. I've been super happy with his defense. And as we said, the biggest thing here was just that he gets a good score and his price rises start again. So with him averaging 48 now for the season, he still has, if he can continue somewhere around that 45, 40 kind of average, he has probably another 100K or so to make. So that's great news for Lockie there. And it's definitely a hold heading into the next few weeks. Their draw starts to open up a little bit in a couple of weeks there. So that's only gonna make things a little bit easier for him. But good to see that in these close contests that he can stay there and and score with the best of them. You know, you can tackle well. Obviously the running game isn't there, but to get 15 points and uh, from the kick meters, 26 from tackle, so 41 in that before all negatives. Very, very good news as a base. And then hopefully you can get a little bit of attacking stats from there. Keelan Kolomatangi, so great to see that he could get a great score of 56 without the any of the tries, any of the try assists, the tackle breaks and the like uh, in this one. So he's showing that he's a clear top gun this season, averaging 62 now against the tougher opponents, you know, 58 in base there. He's going to be one of those guys that you probably want in your side long term. Isaiah Tass, again, one of those guys that I spoke about in the preseason, and this was his breakout game fantasy wise because he's averaging 44 now. And this is what I hoped from him, sort of priced around that 35 mark, 36 mark, that he could come out and sort of have five to 10 points on his starting price, and that's worked out great now. He obviously needed a 56, but in this one only, you know, the one line break, no tries, the try saver, but big run meters again at 207, and they definitely used him a lot down that left-hand side. So he's definitely an option going forward, especially as the draw opens up a little bit. Carl Lawton, we knew that him coming into this game, he was gonna score great, but we didn't really have much information on Lockie Croker. So hopefully we find out a little bit more with Lockie 
Uh, and if you have heard anything, I haven't yet, drop it in the comments or, or DM me there, let someone know. Uh, and then we can make a decision on Lawton because he's super cheap and we know that he can score amazingly well through the middle. 43 tackles in 61 minutes was just crazy. So that's that. There's a lot of good scores in this game. And this is what happens when the ball's in play a lot more. There's plenty of tackles, plenty of run meters and the odd uh, tackle break and offload in there as well. Jakey Trebojevic, big 80 minute effort for him. So just a big shout out there. 50 average so far this year. So he's going, going to go up a little bit in price after this one. Well done to him. Cody Walker, I don't know how he got that try down, but amazing effort from him. Again, not, not really an option yet until their draw potentially opens up, but splitting the kicking, especially with, with Lockie there. Walker kicked the first sort of three or four, and then it uh, it transferred to, to, Lockie, uh, to Lockie Elias mainly from there. Tulangi, a good score from him. I'm still wary on his minutes, on his scoring output, because that 50 is a bit of an outlier at the moment. Sean Kepi, congrats to all the owners of him. He's going to go up a little bit more for sure. 42 average now. He's still got another 150K or so to make. He'll he'll jump about sort of 30 or 40 after this one, but he's still got plenty to make and, and he's been great. He's actually improved as a player. Introduced an offload into his game, introduced uh, you know, one tackle break there, but 29 tackles for one miss. Again, you know, very much pretty clean in the in the negative stats, which is something that he hasn't been and the work ethic hasn't been there as much as it probably should be. Paseca with a decent score there. Michael Cheekham got to end up with another good game from him. He played 75 minutes, so moving between the middle and then the edge when Jacob Host went off, again, was pretty lucky for Cheekham. It's all injury-related at the moment, how he gets big minutes, and he just goes in, gets into his work and does his thing there. 45 in base was great for Cheekham, and will continue to make money. I was looking at him if he was going to get that start this week, and we'll see what happens with Arrow, with Hosty there after getting limited minutes as to how this all plays out. Tommy Trebojevic, so yeah, if you got that try, he picks up about 47, 48, 49 at least there. And you know, for him to have you know a, a non-negative game, two tackle breaks, 190 meters only, and no attacking stats, you'll take that 36 because he has had plenty of games in the past where he'd go lower than that. This is what I was slightly worried about against a better team like the, the Bunnies that he could run into a little bit of trouble. As we said, he should have got a bit more, but a little bit of trouble in trying to get regular tackle breaks and stuff because they're going to throw a lot of bodies at him week to week. Ruben Gack there, 32, so a lower one for him. Still had you know, three line breaks there, which is great, but yeah, that doesn't help his scoring when tackle busted down and he had 10 in negatives there. So Garrick will bounce back, especially against those lower teams there for sure. Sure stuff for those that own him. There's still a heap, well, not as not as many as we thought, actually, 6% there. Uh, and his base stat numbers were a little bit better. Still not running the footy, so probably a little bit worried still on the calf, but he's never been that type of guy to run it crazy unless he was playing in the back row. So we kind of know what we're going to get out of Schuster, but a pretty low one for him there. Cola, not his best game either. 28 in this one, seven tackle breaks, but again, 12 in uh, 12 in negatives in the three errors and the missed tackles that won't happen on a regular basis, but he will score better against those lesser teams. Okay, Weeks came out with a decent score, so he'll uh, hopefully start to eventually get close to making some cash soon. And he's going to be a cool one if there's any injury to DCE or to to Schuster or to, to there's a few guys there. Obviously, Trebojevic is the big one for him. Then he'll be an option. A few people are talking now about the wing fullback position and you know spending up big and guys like the Trell and guys like Teddy. It shows that you know, they've had pretty tough games over this first bunch. So a lot of it was kind of matchup based in the wing fullback position this year, especially when guys like Warbrick and, and Khan Pereira come out and get 60s this week and you've spent up a lot on someone like the Trell. It can be super frustrating. So I completely get it. Uh, these guys are going to be the top scorers across the year. So if you have that in your mind, it is easier to hold them long term, but I can understand why you'd have the shits and you want to move them on. So that's that with the trail. Just wasn't super involved. Had zero tackle breaks in this one. So very low for Trebojevic and also the trail. And if you have both, I'm very sorry to hear that. Hosty with, yeah, 27 minutes in this one. Wasn't great. Jed Cartwright played 20, 35 as well. But the main issue in this one was Isaac Thompson and Davi Moale, who had limited minutes. Davi did with 11, so not great. 20 minutes for him, 11 points. And then Isaac Thompson, the 17 points for his full game effort. So only 93 meters. Really, only it's only going to be in kick returns for him. Two kick defusals, a couple of errors in this game. And you know the one tackle break is not what we're looking for. You're looking for 150 meters plus, sort of four to five tackle breaks to get that base of sort of 28 to 30. And then attacking stats on top of that. Do you hold him? Look, 
he's a hold or a sell. I can understand why he looked to sell, but he's still going to be priced around that sort of three. 30 to 340 mark and he's not causing a lot of issues in your side maybe you tr maybe you try if you can not play him but yeah i can see the the, the reason and, and the thought process behind potentially uh, getting rid of him but they're the saturday games guys three game slate for our sunday is very exciting two through to eight there's plenty of games going on i wish you all the best for, best of luck for those and see if you can crack a thousand this week